Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Perth's Premier Podcast. Monkey Sword Fight with me, your host Jordan Patrick, and no Mikey Dots. No Mikey Dots this week, but you've got a new co-host. We've got a new co-host, we've got Murray Gedd. Eh? Alright, mate. Alright. That's about all we're going to get for you, just... Eh? Aye, just no, no, aye. Catch up, you'll settle into it, man. This aye. is the quietest I've ever heard you in all the years I've known you now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Mack on the ones and twos as per usual. What's happening? Uh, now we usually go straight in our words with dots, but he never actually sent us a voice message for it, did he? Believe in your infinite potential. Your only limitations are those you set upon yourself. What I'm hoping you'll be alright with is if uh, we do words with Macapella this week. Words but Mac- what we will have is uh, we'll ask Mike to do a wee. Uh, voice memo and send it to us and then we'll, we'll add it in in time for Thursday. So I hope you like this one, right? Because this is good. A successful man is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks others have thrown at him. That's deep, son. Oh. <laughs> that's oh, good. Man, it's good. It's good. You listen, I go, ah, <laughs> shit, that's good. It's a fucking bell. Like I say, we're, uh, we're within one third of the usual. Like I say, we've got money again. Alright. Alright. Come along. We just spent the last hour and a half watching the first World Cup semi final. Sure. Spoilers, aye. France are in the final. Mm-hmm. And by the time this goes to press, so will either England and or Croatia. Well, not and or, or Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> who, but just before I give out all the, the emails and all that kind of stuff, who are you thinking is going to win the game tomorrow? <sighs> who do you think is going to meet France in the final? England, I'm completely England, right. France for you. Definitely. Like I said, I was a bit on the fence, but then you made a really good point earlier where you said, like, Croatia have looked a bit dead on their feet, man, and as one thing I've not thought England have looked at any point in this tournament is tired, and that's yeah. with a penalty shootout and playing against... Uh, but they were never in any danger against Sweden, were they? It was yeah. really, really yeah. comfortable. No, nah, but as I'm saying, they've, they've, not, they've won all their games that they've needed to win <coughs> comfortably. Yeah. And I think you're lying if you think both Belgium and England were playing their heart out in that game they had at the end of the group mm-hmm. and I think as well as that Belgium arguably came off with a worse tie yeah I wonder what Belgium will be thinking tonight thinking I wonder if maybe they we should have just won that game ah exactly yeah. do you know what I mean that's fucking easy run though eh oh, what's my guy like, what a fucking loss against Belgium on purpose well that's what I think because a lot of people saying both teams were going out saying well if we lose it doesn't really matter yeah and I think arguably Belgium would have got would have beat Colombia a wee bit easier but I think this is the first real test you said it again Andy earlier man the only team that uh, well you said it with Croatia sorry but you said it with Croatia I've played Argentina more like oh, Argentina uh, Croatia and Boston and you're like mm. actually Argentina was just pish yeah. uh, Argentina made everybody look good but I think the key point is once you get to yeah they won the three group games and they topped their group by, by maximum points but they went into the knockouts and they won penalty shootout and then another penalty shootout. So there's, you know, 240 minutes plus penalty kicks. Um, so you got to admit, at the end of that Russia game, it looked like they were a wee bit dead on their feet. So I just well, I just think, I don't know, England will have enough to see them off. Whether they've got enough to beat France... Mm, I I, again, I, I you, you put it in the states that a lot of times when it comes to finals and stuff like that... Mm-hmm. All bets are off, man. Yeah. Like, your form can go out the window, but... Um, well, it's like you remember two years ago at Euro 2016, France bottled it in the final against Portugal. Mm. What's to say that, you know, if they got to the final against either England or Croatia, the same wouldn't happen again, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Okay, man. We'll get in a wee bit of mail in, in sports, they like, say, uh, yeah. email address is monkeyswordfightpodcast at gmail.com. Um, again, thank you for all that have listened to the wee post-blend special edition episode mm-hmm. um, Facebook's Monkey Sword Fight and we got Twitter as MSF underscore podcast and Twitter well, that's the budget um, yep. some good feedback so far on the, the videos of mining your sales performances I checked earlier and the video was it like one of the videos was about 800 views 750 views yeah that was your one wasn't it yeah but mate, that's what I said to you on the night, man. Your performance was beast, and obviously, then you've got the video of that there. Get out, share it about, and uh, everybody else that who wasn't there that's then seen it on Facebook, and that's been like, fucking hell, guys, actually funny, yeah. yeah. Well, he is funny, it, yeah. but it's like you know what I mean. You can actually then go up there and do stand up. Uh, and, and, and first thing anyway. And the feedback's all been really yeah. good, so that's been a nice wee buzz. Um, got some good feedback from 
Daniel, didn't Daniel Miller, yeah, I was just about to read that news. So Daniel Miller got in contact with us when we were talking about uh, Scottish football not doing so well overall. So Daniel messaged in saying, with regards to your Scottish football failing so badly in the conversation in the last podcast, what annoys me massively as a coach for Boys 2017, we have dominated the league this year, beating one team 30 nil, which is not fun for either team, coach nor parent. Now the reason scores like this happen is because we don't have tiered leagues in Perth like we do elsewhere. They should have a development league for the lads who just want to have fun, and an intermediate league, and then an advanced league. We don't play competitive football until we reach a living aside, which I think is 11 or 12, 12 and above. So that's what, primary 7 or first, first year, year of high yeah. school, yeah. So what they've just introduced as well, you used to go from 7s to 11s, they've now introduced a 9 aside intermediate stage right. but um, we don't play competitive football until we reach 11 aside which is ridiculous hence what I think is wrong with the Scottish grassroots football we're not allowed to keep score what's the point in having goals if you don't keep score ran over now I'm a massive believer in this now mm-hmm. don't be wrong I think no kids should make to feel like they get put off football mm-hmm. but when I played man I've been I've won games by like 5 goals and I've lost games by 10 goals mm-hmm. and I think it's important to get you put on your arse every now and again. Yeah. Especially when you're a bairn, because like we were talking about last week, if you don't do it, and then all of a sudden they go up to their 12-year-old and they experience their first defeat, mm-hmm. or they experience the fact that they're now keeping points in the league, mm-hmm. and you lose, and you didn't care how to deal with that, yeah. fuck. We talked about this when we were sitting in your garden the other night, didn't we? Nice. And I, had, you know, I know folk were laughing, because again, I was being pretty blunt to the point, but medals aren't for participating. Medals aren't for everybody. Well done, little Timmy, you took part, here's a medal. Medals are for winners. Uh, And you need to be able to learn to win, but and you need to be able to learn to lose as well. And I think, you know, that carries on into your adult life. If you're brought up and raised, you know, everybody's a winner and, you know, everybody gets a medal, then when you get into the big, bad, real world, it's not like that. Uh, No, that's my exact point. It drives me up the wall. With a team I coach, it does mind nothing. Like I try and encourage my boys to be competitive but respectful. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Then you just go rubbing it in folks' faces if you've won, mm-hmm. but just fucking try and win. Nobody goes out to try and uh, lose. I'm sorry about that rookie mistake. I had my yeah, phone. I had no fucking. <laughs> I didn't have my phone on silent. First thing I my fucking silent. Fucking pro. Fuck horror, man. No, I, I, I completely agree with you, Daniel. I reckon that it's ludicrous that the boys don't have, or the girls, like the kids, do not have an experience of being competitive. League. I used to love playing in like cups and leagues and fucking. I won a treble with my cup team when I was like seven or eight. And it was brilliant, man. Like, we won everything that year. Yeah. We won the League, won the League Cup, and we won the big tournament that they used to do <coughs> in Melbourne as well. Brilliant. Yeah. And I remember it well. That was the last time I was ever considered good at football. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I completely agree with Daniel. I reckon that's a big problem in the Scottish game. She made another good point. She just said uh, winning and losing is a massive part of life, not just sport. This is just echoing mm-hmm. what we just said there. Uh, not learning the feelings and emotions of the above until you reach a teenage, a teenage level, basically, uh, is ludicrous. And then she says, keep up the good work. So thanks very much for your feedback, Daniel. Yeah, I appreciate nice. that. Thank you. Uh, everyone's been really fucking lazy. But honestly, we say it every episode, but we've been made up with a, just the response in the last couple of months and folks starting to really pick up the lesson. So yeah. I appreciate it. There's some really interesting guests lined up. We spoke to loads of really cool people at the Blend and Stand Out mm-hmm. on Friday. Yeah. Um, so hopefully have a good few guests and some potential new developments and uh, up in our production levels and things like yeah, that so on the horizon so big big things happening man so also catch the next blend and stand out I believe is the 10th of August um, it'll be a flip reverse it'll be Andy Mack and Mikey Dots performing I'm actually away camping he's just away writing more material alright but I will definitely be back and hopefully <laughs> we'll try and get a bit more bigger 10th of August, yeah, 10th, Friday, August, 10th yeah. August, starting at 6.30, Blend Cafe. I'm away on Mull High. But, uh, fuck it, well, let's just go over. We've got a few notes, like you say, we're missing... Are, uh, I'm missing uh, Mike this week, man, it man, feels... Hey, strange. He's got this prick here. So. <laughs> yeah, he's just a bit pressure on there. <laughs> hey, fuck's sake, let's go him. <laughs> <laughs> the voice definitely isn't as good as... Uh, as uh, but, Murray, how I'll are you? Be, uh, I'm going to be listening to this, don't worry. That's I fucking right. hate... Like listening back to stuff, like fucking hearing my voice, 
Especially yeah, when you listen to calls and that, it's like, oh, what's the fucking Murray's coming out for fuck's sake? Oh, yeah, yeah. Murray's really funny on the phone, though. <laughs> Like when I used to work, he's very like, Hi there, my name's yeah. Murray, what can I do for you today? Very and then he comes off the phone and says, Fuck sake, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he doesn't. he doesn't. We all had a brawl time in the green room at the, the gig after playing then. We met Murray for a couple of respectable beverages. Yeah, I could say that. <laughs> I got a wee bit wild on. I got a uh, bit messy on Friday night, like. Then so, you a couple of gins. And then uh, me, and, uh, me and Andy went round to Mike's to watch the thing with the football on Saturday, and that was. I was ropey biscuits. Yeah, I had to go home for a fucking wee nap and that after the football and that because uh, it was just, it's just tired, mate. I'm getting too old for this carry on, mate. Especially no being expected. Yeah, it was not an expected hangover. I was ready to have. Well, it was because I knew it was already getting carried away by a, about forty-five minutes after I went out. No, <laughs> it, was, it was the it was a minute because we'd done the bonus episode then. Uh, Mike and Connie left to get some dinner, me and Andy had a couple more tinnies in the back garden, it was by the time we left here about an hour later, I was just like, right, <laughs> yeah, this is a nice new, but uh, Mike's our usual, he's usually the kind that comes up with a good story, so I had a wee uh, scout through the news today, okay. uh, first of all, I, just got, I want to get folks' opinions on this, now, uh, the fucking, the orange walk, right, so, <laughs> regardless of your football leanings, or religious leanings, just. Did you ever just find out about mental? Well, this thing still goes on. I didn't I really. Still fucking grown up, man. I didn't really see a place for it. That's what I mean. Today, but as, as I think as somebody made this own reasons. If that was about a war, five hundred years ago, four hundred years ago, where a bunch of Catholics had killed a bunch of Muslims. Mm. Yeah. I did not think that would have been, it would, it would already be, so it's, I just find it, it baffles me that it's still going on, and then as well as that this week, apparently a priest was assaulted outside a church, really? on the route, aye, by fucking marchers, now I didn't get, I didn't read, because it was on the fucking, the Sun website, so, I took it with a pinch of salt, I say, yeah, but, uh, that, but it just seems that, I, though, eh? I remember my old man telling me that he was in Glasgow one day, and it was on, and like, couldn't have crossed the road, so I went walking past and had all the guys in the full get up, came with the drums and looked official, and then right at the end was just 30 or 40 drunken fucking idiots with our tops off, waving Union Jacks about. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I don't believe, I mean, like, I don't believe in God, I'm, I'm an atheist, humanist, all that kind of stuff, mm. but, you know, if you, if you want to, to do that sort of thing, uh, you can't be going about abusing people of other religions because they don't believe in the same thing maybe or the same whatever that you do and the way I see it is if you're going to you're going to practice it in that fair enough but you know you don't need to be out ramming it down everybody's throats and certainly not attacking or assaulting people of other faiths and other beliefs there's no place for that in today's society no not having the best that. thing about it was he said when he was when he was there as they were all carrying the banners loyalist on his lodge and they just said lol so I've carried these fucking big lol, lol flags about with them while they're doing it. But no, I didn't want to go spend too much time on it, but I just wanted to get it there. I think that it's, it's so outdated and unnecessary that... And it, 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 it stirs feelings of uh, anger, hate. It really does stir up emotions and that as well. I don't know if it... I just don't think it's got a place... In today's society. In t- today, no. no, I just... I don't. Um, but it's not something I'm... You know, massively knowledgeable on, so it's not something I really want to comment too much on. I, know, I, I didn't want to get any yeah. massive discussion. I just thought I just wanted to put it there. Yeah. Um, what are some some better news? The the wee football team escaped for the cave. Oh, the the Thai boys getting out from the cave. Yeah, well, that's a good. That's a nice story, isn't it? I still don't understand how the fuck they ended up doing there. If you it was see so the fucking passage they had to fucking go through. Ah, it was mental. But I'm like, how did they get that far in? If that's how difficult it was to get that far See, in. See, we're thinking that work. We're thinking that the teachers took them in the cave and it's been like the monsoon season, so it started to rain, so they thought, fuck, let's go f- higher ground and went further into the cave to try and get away from, obviously, the fucking uh, water. Also, it's just, and it just filled up. And it just filled, filled up, up and just the trapped them in. Man, man, must have fucking they make a movie of it, though, don't worry. Ah, oh, they will. They'll definitely make a movie of that, like. That's a good show, yeah. They'll yeah, probably they will make make a movie well, honestly. They fucking, oh, I so felt bad for the, the, the Navy diver. Get yeah. oxygen through and then die because it was maybe something like a four hour. A four hours, I think it's four hours to get them, five hours to get back, or. Uh, <sighs> was that, what was it called? Choke point or something as well, mm-hmm. where they had to like pass their 
oxygen tanks through it, so you have to take them off, pass it through this little fucking gap, and then wriggle through it, get through it, and then get to the other side, put the oxygen tank back on, and then fucking continue on. The gap's only 15 inches at points, so I mean, you're talking about a fucking tiny, tiny little gap, which oh, is just man. rock. Mm. Um, yeah, you're dealing with claustrophobia yeah. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, so the majority well, of the boys couldn't they swim either, obviously, so they had to like, send somebody through to do diver training with each of them. I don't think they don't know. How many mm-hmm. fucking 12 year olds or 13 year olds are that, do you know? How old were they all? 12, but hey, yeah, yeah, maybe a different, 12 year olds and that, do you know? Maybe a different culture over there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it may just be something that they don't do very yeah, much. But over then there. there's huge fishing and all that kind of stuff. And I suppose there were signs as well saying, like, no, do, do not enter. Well, it's funny, man, I didn't care. I, I just wouldn't take 12 waddies into a fucking cave. <laughs> She was a bit sus, but at the same time, <laughs> you know what I mean? 25 though. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, man, that was. I see Elon Musk as well piping up all of a sudden. I've got a submarine, I'll oh, get the yeah, light. Totally. Like, right, fuck off. I think they fucking rushed the mission just so they didn't get the submarine. Okay. You saw that Michael, what's his name, uh, Rappaport got done for the joke though, didn't you, that he made about them? No, what did he say? He said, uh, I haven't seen someone try to get a tie boy out of a hole this frantically since I walked in on Kevin Spacey in the men's room at Chuck E. G's. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Wow. And then I saw the one on Twitter earlier on when the game was on that was saying after discovering that Danny Murphy's doing the BBC commentary tonight, what has it that the 12 Thai boys have decided to go back into the cave? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's wow. Too fucking it's soon. Not funny, man, but <laughs> who fucking comes up with this thing, uh-huh. man? I remember the day Michael Jackson died. I woke up, before I even knew he was dead, I had six messages telling me he was dead. You should have seen this guy. You should have seen Murray on the day. I remember we were in Donsky's. Murray was a bit... Honestly, I've never seen him so drunk in my life. He, he was literally mourning Michael Jackson that day. Uh, and I said to him, I never knew day. you were a fan of Michael Thought Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping the chat, mate. Oh, <laughs> and he's yeah. like, he's like, oh, he's the biggest fan. I was like, oh, I never knew. And what did you do that day? He just got absolutely smashed. Eh? Just singing Smash Man that. in the Mirror and that all night. I mean, if I still do this every now and again, I'm going to be Michael Jackson sesh. I'm sitting there watching my back yeah. on Spotify and just like... That's what made you in the way. Ah, you've got to be in the mood for it, but sometimes... It's like Linkin Park. <sighs> like, I've not listened to him for fucking years. <laughs> then Chester Benton obviously committed suicide. I was just like, oh, I'll go back and listen to albums. I was like, fucking great Oh, I mean, I, I power through them wars. I've said this to the boys a few times. I uh, I got right back into the system of a Downs Toxicity album. Mm, nice. Oh, man. Cracker. Cracker. Oh, pardon me. Up. Fucking much, right? Well, hey, well, fire the I've not got much on the way of news. You got what well, you said? You had something you wanted to talk I've, about, Andy Martin. No, I don't have anything. I've got a couple of news stories here, but they're really just really stupid, daft ones that I'd found on the internet. I was like, "Fuck! If we need a news story one week, I'll pull these out the bag to to see what we can do." So, uh, the first one is: woman calls for a KFC just so the delivery driver can help her get rid of a spider. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fucking legend. When you see this all the time, there's been times I've been that hungover when I've ordered a takeaway and what to say, kind of the instruction that doors open, let yourself in. Mm. Well, I like the fact that she's a, a criminality student uh, at Bournemouth University. So I would think, you know, doing criminality or something like that should be fairly smart. But yeah, so she ordered a, a KFC delivery on Delivery or Justy or something like that. Um, and uh, all her housemates were away, so she asked the driver to come in. He turned out that he was scared of spiders. <laughs> so she begged him for help, um, and um, yeah, basically he came up. There was a moment of panic where the spider dropped to the floor and started running away, but it was eventually captured by the heroic driver, and then he flushed the intruder down the toilet. And then Demi said, why don't you stick around and help me finish this bucket, big boy? And uh, yeah, that was that. She said, I wanted to hug him, a real life hero. So what do we think about that? Is that acceptable? You've got a problem in your house calling a delivery driver to come I down I've been before that she ordered a takeaway and they said, go in the, the takeaway and give me a lift time. I went to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I live at E Valentine Place. <laughs> Can you pick Be a two pound delivery charge like send to the food in me. We just have seen that one. So like going into El Rashid Delight go, can I get a pizza and chips and I'll give you an extra two fifty if you deliver it up to my house and be in the car. Fucking right. That's fucking genius, man. Yeah, man I think I'm gonna take away some dinner. Here we're gonna trademark that idea. Kebab and a lift. That's a fucking sound like kebab and a taxi. Fair delivery place, so you maybe charge them like four buck or something like that oh, for the delivery. Man. 
That'd be still be cheaper than a taxi. Bar, I'm going to Arman Bank. I mean, I can't. Right? Off. Yeah, yeah, but then I literally can fall out of a pub and land in my flat. That's you know what I mean? That's true. Still, that's a fucking good idea, though. That's a good idea. I was going to the day, but I just like fucking sharp sellers and that. I can't do that. Uh, the other one I've got for you is uh, clogged toilet causes air quality institu- uh, incident and an entire high school has to be evacuated. <laughs> Imagine even a boy that shat so nasty you had to close in your school. <laughs> the smell which students reportedly claim caused their eyes and tears, uh, their eyes to tear and their throats to burn, <laughs> must have been really bad, eh? Oh, man. Uh, it was reported from a toilet in a, a high school in North Carolina. So. Oh, I'll be the heat too, though, eh? Yeah. Um, uh, no members or of staff or students were transported from the school. The local fire department and paramedics said so. Obviously, it wasn't that deadly. But yeah, that's about all I could find in the news this week. A high school oh, gets man. shut down because somebody took a shit, and uh, a delivery driver coming in to drop off chicken and clear out some spiders. <laughs> like, that's pretty fucking good news. <laughs> you break it down like that. So yeah, that's, that's about it this week, mate. Yeah, well, we jump into bro, oh, no, and our listeners can enjoy Mike's voice this week for once. So we've got um, we're going to a couple that we had left over from last week. Yes. Oh, we've just got some more coming in just now as well. So we've got loads of brawn on. So, so what have we got for last week left over there? Uh, you got there, any man? Oh, I don't know for last week. I've got all the ones that have come in in the last hour since uh, we just we'll go the recent ones. We will try and make a note of them at some point. All right. First up, uh, it's a man, Greg Tarbot. Wearing socks with sliders. <sighs> no, socks and nah. sandals, mate. Come on. Nah. It's never been okay. Ever. Like, right. no. Nah. <sighs> nah. If you're going to put socks on, you might as well put shoes on. Yeah. Like, that's just not happening. So, that's, Greg, nah. That's Noah's all around. Right. Exactly. Nah, yeah. That's a swift one. A swift no there, Greg. Sorry about that, mate. Uh, Stephen Tosh. Competitive vaping. <sighs> no, man. Nah. Right. God, you boys are big vapors. I ah, no, but I guess man, I vape so I don't smoke as much, or I don't smoke. Yeah, These yeah. cunts are sitting in their rooms with one hand on their cock and the other hand on their vape. I blew a dragon. No, no, fuck off. Do you know? I think it's really sweet. Some of the tricks and that that they do. Though. Come on. No, I'm, I'm no, getting. Like, I'm going to say bro for that. I'm just telling you two. You two vape and you're saying no, I don't. And I'm saying bro. I'm, I'm honest, honest, that's right. what I'm saying. No. Surely there's something <laughs> better to do with your time than try and fucking blow massive hoops. He should be able to do it. The fucking smoke that comes off, off, off fucking hook, man. The fucking choking the smoke, man. Fuck. <laughs> Boy, not again. <laughs> uh, next one I've got. Uh, so that's two two nos and a bra there. Uh, I've got my man, Sean Moran. Sean Moran. Boy. <laughs> Sean. Honestly, me and Sean used to have such a laugh back in the day in the hydro, man. Um, Sean's. I've, I've known Sean's a bit first year, man. He's one of my one of my favourite people, man. That guy's a crack up my half. So. He's an absolute legend. Yeah, we used to just sit and have one extra blazing on the radio in the the loyalty days back in back well, in the he's, day. He's through in a couple of weeks, man. So Sean, if you're listening, let's all get pissed. Give us a shout, Sean. Yes. Uh, right. What's he saying? He's saying Justin Bieber, bro or not? I'm not gonna lie to you, man. His last album wasn't bad. Plus, Despacito was a banger when you're off your napper in the loft, so. Based on his last couple of years. <laughs> no, okay, well, based on his music, I'll give him a bro. As a person, he's a. He's a whole. But, um Okay. I was like, da. You're going, you're going da? Nah. Nah. Because they say that's a fuck box and we've not heard it before. Nah, no. nah, fuck that. Fuck the beats. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate? Any reason Just why like you don't like him? Irritating. Oh, he's definitely irritating. As a <laughs> like person, irritating. he's a wee ball bag, guy. Right? like his tunes, Shit. no? Nah, different. Nah, I've got a couple of his tunes, eh? I'm a Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going from, like, fucking kill switch to slipknot and slips in a bit of Bieber. Bieber, Bieber, Bieber. Uh-huh. Bieber. Bieber. Jackson, eh? Can't fit, ain't you? You're a man of the people, eh? Hey? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just going to say no, okay, I'm with Murray, it's fucking, just fucking annoys me. And then you see him like, like beefing with like photographers and that, like outside the clubs, and I just hope one day somebody just fucking boxes his... It was when he was with, um, was it Mayweather? Oh, no, he walked Mayweather well, through well, the well, Yeah, totally, he was just like, you're a fucking dog. Apparently they're no mates or something anymore though. I don't, I don't know why. He's a fuck. Floyd like Mayweather's a fucking dick as well. So what's the, what we're saying here is that that's two that's two nos and a bra. A bra, a bra for the music, but a no for the person. Ah yeah. 
So that's like 2.5 to 0.5 then, yeah. <laughs> that's a resounding no overall then, aye. Fuck's sake. Right, hey, we've got one from Mikey Dots. Hey, Mike. Doing shows with it, Mike Dots. The listeners will be the judge of that. Right. I'll fucking say no, like, hey. You <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't fucking listen anyway. That's true. Why do you listen to see that? <laughs> I'm going to hate to say no. Sorry, guys. Ah, I'm, I'm, no, I'm missing Mikey Dar. I already said that earlier on. Right. Like, no, like, it's not the same without you, man. But I uh, hope he brings us back some nice presents, like some uh, some nice Jordans, some Timbies, some Timbies, yeah, some Arnold Palmer ice tea. If he doesn't at least bring us back some fucking Jolly Ranchers for the podcast, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh, Mike, I'm wanting some of those American tangy cheese, like the the natural cheese Doritos. Pick me up, dog. Come on, don't let us down. He's not coming back on if he doesn't fucking bring something. But no, it's a big no from me. I do miss Mike. Wagwan Ralph Rogalski. Uh, he's got in with us saying, wearing jeans just to cut about the house in when it's only you slash Mrs slash kids, etc. Like, no guests expected and no going anywhere. First of all, mate, I want to say for your cadence there, bro, just the way you've typed that out yeah. was fantastic. But um, I'm, I'm going to say that's a no for me, like, if I'm in my house, even if I've got guests coming with them, I'm currently sitting here in a pair of football shorts and socks. Odd yeah, totally. socks. You just want to be comfy in your house. Oh, I am. Mm-hmm. This is what I so I, yeah. I've got your house and I'm in, still in my joggies. Ah, yeah, so I, I no. Well, that's a, that's a no for me, mate. Yeah, there's no need to be wearing your jeans. Three no no no. On the same point, same scenario, but with outdoor shoes slash boots slash trainers. If it's my house, I'm not putting shoes on. No. It's the first thing I take off. Yeah. I'll come in. Kick them bad boys off. Right. Yeah, I don't know about shoes in this. Oh, fuck I. See them again, there, man. No, no for indoor shoes. No. Um, in my opinion, Ralph says, I'm an all out no, by the way. In my opinion, cutting a boot in the house for a non resident company should never be done wearing bottom half attire that could be worn with a belt, top half attire that could have cut buttons or a collar, and certainly never outdoor footwear, bar slides, or flip flops. I know of some who disagree, and so I'm intrigued to hear the monkey sword fight, sword fight ruling on this. So, uh, well, we already a, established that flip flops. Well, that's a guess if you're going to wear socks with them as well. That's uh, a big no. But well, like, these, these are interchangeable, bro. No, but for your point there, Ralph, he's put also WWE, bro, bro. I used to love that shit. I still do from time to time. I follow them on fucking Instagram and that. WWE's mate, you ever been in the pub and somebody drops a glass? Now you just wait for the Stone Cold Steve Austin music. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, oi, oi. <laughs> Some of my fucking favourite videos in the last few years are when folk have started the uh, RKO and their pals. Yeah. That's some of the best shit. The best one was that one I posted the other day with the Michael Jackson impersonator doing the moonwalk DDT finisher. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'll share this to the oh, page. Oh my man. word. That, yeah, just like, that was fucking That brilliant. was one of my favourite things I've ever seen on the fucking internet. That was beast. That guy with a belt. Yeah. So there you go, Ra- Ralph, it's a bra. Big bra for WWE. Um, I'll go through because we're going to get onto that. And we never touched on this in news, so we'll make this a brief one. Ryan Scott, Chub Chub, has popped in with Boris Johnson. Are you alright just to say twat instead? Ah, uh, yeah. We'll give this one. He's that much of a character that we're not going to give him a bra, no. We're just going to call him a twat. In fact, it, it, the thing is, Ryan had also commented earlier saying to talk about Neymar, but we talked about him last week, and he didn't get a bra no, he was just called a cunt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I so think I, the same applies to Boris Johnson. It's so almost like new, cunt of the week. Well, yeah, we cunt of the week. Ah, yes, yes mate. <laughs> On feature. <laughs> cunt of the week this week goes to Boris, it's my ball, I'm going him, Johnson, yeah. who called a photo shoot to his own resignation. Yep. What a fucking bin, mate. Opportunistic, self-serving, fucking parasite. Oh, he's literally a human embodiment of a Muppet. But like a shite Lidl brand Muppet. Do you know what I mean? Like that's... <laughs> just fucking... <coughs> See, now, the one good thing he's ever done was that rugby tackle in soccer a few yeah. years ago. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like elbowed the wee kid in that. But I know. There you go, Chubbs. You have nominated this cunt... This week's... This cunt's week of the what? <laughs> this week's cunt of the week. This week's cunt of the week is Boris Johnson. We'd yeah. get like a wee trumpet tune in there, like da, 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 da. I'll give you something a day this week on a <laughs> <my> holiday. <laughs> uh, we've got one more, a couple more here. So we've got Daryl Ann Miller. Guys walking a bit topless in the hot weather. Fair enough hang of having a sunbathe on a park, but walking a bit in the middle of town and out of Primark in the centre with your top off just makes Obdi uncomfortable, so it's a no. 
Okay, so oh. basically taps off doing the tune. Taps off doing the tune. Now, see, I, I'm going to give you the down. Let's see if you're doing the inch or doing the river or fucking in your own back garden and you crack on my eye. But right enough, I'm not going to see a Jake Ball cutting about with his RFC tattoo that's been scraped in with a needle and some Indian ink. Because obviously, he would have a Rangers tattoo, no? Self- that's one. just an opinion. Right, could say CFC be a wee. I'm going to say Dundee. DFC, DUFC. Uh, aye, nah, I'm going to go with that on. That's a no for me. Like. I'd say not to. I think it's just mostly like. If you're in the tomb with like, your top off, you're it's probably on like heroin. You can usually, the folk that you see with their taps off walking through the tomb have also got Adidas poppers on and their t shirt tucked uh, into yeah. the back aye. of the brakes. Yep. So usually then, again, you know, you know that they're about. It's no joke. summer till you see your first heroin addict going taps off, man. That's that's the business. Oh, fuck, these standards have just come on. Oh. <laughs> Uh, last one for this week. Well, last one from the cut from the, uh, the listeners. Roddy Bader's put DC, bro or no, Daniel Cormier. Shout out to Hot Rods. Aye. Uh, massive bro, man. Aye. What he did to me, at the weekend is like. And now, John Jones is going to be sitting there going, ha, huh, that's all the things that I should have been Aye. doing. Well, Brendan, mm-hmm. Brendan showed me a good, really good point is like, he'll give you, a, he'll can, he put. Daniel Cormier for greatest of all time because Ooh. he's been clean he goes if you've been popped once for steroids mm-hmm. then I'll give you a pass but if you've been popped twice for steroids you're out of the category so he then said both John Jones and Anderson Silva cannot be considered the greatest of all time because they've both been busted more than once Cormier apart from John Jones mm-hmm. and didn't want to ask the thing but Miocic is named Mug and he sparkled them it wasn't even a full round was it? And no, it was right at the end of the first round, but it's as they were coming out of the clinch, and he just caught him with a right hand, it just, just right, right place, right time, right, in the right on the spot, man. But I like his, his wrestling's fantastic. He's by no means a knockout artist, but he's got the skills to put folk like Miocic on their arse. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say DC for me gets a big bro. Dude, we're talking about Stipe Miocic being the greatest heavyweight of all time. Yeah, just last week. Although Cain Velasquez might have something to say about that, but uh, to be honest, I thought Stipe was going to smash him. Not not smash him, you know, blow him out of there in you know a minute and a half, two minutes, but you know would grind that out over over yeah. the rounds and and would dominate the fight. I, I see, was, that's what I thought. You think about it, man. I I don't know how many times I'm going to underestimate Cormier because he just doesn't look like he should be any good or as good as he is. But don't forget all the fucking commentary that he does, all the anal- uh, analysis stuff, all the uh, the TV work that he does at Fox and all that as well. I mean, a lot of these guys are going into world-class fight and they're locked away and it is just training there. The guy's spread absolutely thin, but he's still able to turn up and perform at the highest, highest level. He's fucking 39. Exactly, man. He's, he's 39. That's the same thing. Well, the next point, so that's a resounding bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, big up. Yeah, 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 fuck him, man. Roddy's putting a former point. Brock Lesnar. No. Right. Ah, right. just like, how, that was WWE shit. He comes fucking bolting in the ring, pushes fucking yeah. Cormier. <laughs> and the thing is, man, Dana White, that's one thing. Was that Vince McMahon said this. He was, I was like, I'm never going to real fighting because you can't promote real fighting. Yeah. Because. You can't tell who's going to win, so you can put all your backing behind, like they did with Ngannou. Mm-hmm. They put all mm-hmm. this backing behind them, and then nothing. He gets pumped. And then in his last fight there, they were booing him. Their, their fight was getting booed. No wonder, so because they, they were throwing about two punches around. Ah. I mean, there was only something like 27 strikes landed between the two of them across the entire fight but uh, the thing is man I think Lesnar can get fucked and I see why Dana's doing it man it's obviously where the money is yeah. do you know what I mean that's the fight that guys who aren't fucking um, guys who aren't full time UFC fans are going to watch that fight because they can who Brock Lesnar is just like they can who Conor McGregor is exactly. see you just touch on what you said there about Francis and Ngannou right he looked like a fucking monster. He looked like he was going to decimate the heavyweight division. And then he ran into Stipe Miocic. Mm-hmm. And then that was his first fight since. And he looked like he was scared to pull the trigger. Well, that's what he was saying. Which makes what DC did to Stipe Miocic all that more impressive. Well, and Ganu fucking came out and said he was embarrassed. He had a big <laughs> fucking apology yeah. post on his Instagram. We should have kept all this for sports. 
Um, I've got a, come on, a couple of broad noise here. Um, Johnny Depp. Bro. Do you reckon? Even nowadays. Guy's a, guy's it's, a fucking legend. what he's done, aye, definitely. Because I'm like, I'm, I fucking love a lot of his films, like fucking, I love, Blow was a fucking belter. Mm. The one where he was, uh, thing he, he was great in the first Pirates of the Caribbean fucking, I mean, you could go on for fucking ages about the fucking stuff he's done. Mm. He just seems to be turning into a bit of fanny. Apparently he got pissed and punched a crew member on the Tupac and Biggie film that he's in. It's fucking Johnny Depp, man, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. So you're going, bro. The guy's a fucking G, man. He's a fucking <laughs> legend. The I guy's am. been making movies for, what, 25 years at least? And everything generally that he puts out is of a really, really high calibre. Okay, you know, man. I, I, Fear and Loathing, Secret Garden, Pirates of the Caribbean. Personally, I didn't like it, but. Mm. Well, the first one was good, but then they made. They're entertaining. They made like eight mere films, and you're like, hey, these are all fucking. It's the same thing. Look at the amount of cash that he's earning off. Well, apparently, man, he's still skin, though, because the boy's got 17 mansions. Mm. 17. Who the fuck needs 17 mansions? Spending like 300 grand a month oh. on wine and stuff like that. <laughs> Do you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> and the rest. Oh, fuck me, man. We've got one more here. Uh, the last one that's just come in live. Daniel Miller, since you give us some cracking feedback, we'll slide this one in. KFC. Daniel, have you ever ordered a KFC to get the delivery driver to take rid of a spider for you? <laughs> to take rid of a spider? To get rid of a spider take for you? Of take rid of rid of the spider for me? Uh, KFC's bra, man. Oh, fuck I, man. You, get, you get it good, man. If you go in and it's proper crunchy, crispy goodness. Some days you get it has been under the same fucking heat lamp for about two years. There is a thing with KFC, sometimes you get bits of chicken though and they're really fucking slimy. Aye, 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 no. If you get it right, I like a burger at a KFC, man. I like one of the singers. Hey, it's your boy, son. You know what with the chips? Ah, they're alright, man. KFC's chips have always been shite. I've been so, yeah. Yeah, always been shite. Bur- best chip, chip, man, you've got some Burger King chips. Oh, yeah, yeah, fries, yeah, mate. definitely. What we're saying, bra and KFC then? Bra. bra. That's a bra. All right. often than not. I've got one more because obviously we watched uh, France Belgium tonight. Mm-hmm. And obviously the loser of that goes into a third and fourth place playoff in the World Cup. What are we thinking about the game on Saturday, which is the third and fourth place playoff? Oh, bra or not? Fucking waste of time, man. No. Waste of time. Okay, well, waste of time uh, see, if it was up to me, man, I would just say third and fourth place is decided by a head to head of the two teams. So who has a better. Goal score yeah. games one ratio. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's literally how I do it because nobody wants to fucking watch it. No. The players didn't want to fucking play in it. But you like because what it is, they didn't even play their superstars because the superstars are like, I'm not risking getting injured in a fucking third place playoff. Totally. It's almost like a friendly, isn't that it? Is, yeah. It's the most completely pointless game in all of FIFA and all of football. There's no point to it. I do. It's like we said earlier. Like these guys are competitors. Nobody's competing for third and fourth place. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm a fucking third place medal. Yes, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that, well, Murray's absolutely right. You know, these guys don't give a fuck about. Yeah, I've got my third place medal. They don't give a shit about that. They don't give a shit about the runners up medal. You want the winners medal, and it comes back to again what we talked about earlier. You know, it's all about winning. It's all about first place. These guys don't give a fuck about this meaningless rubber now. No, um, I think it's just a big knob, but sponsorship. And TV. Nah, he's at, and there's, there's no fan who would, if they come out at the end of this World Cup and said, right, from now on, when it gets to the, the two losers of the semi finals, are going to get put in a head to head, and that's it. There's no game. It's just points, gains, goals scored, games won. Could any of you name a team that came third place in the FIFA World Cup over any edition of the World Cup? No. Nah. Mm, no, nah. off the top of my head. Not at all. Would you watch the game? Though, eh? Would you watch the game on Saturday? Say if you were just chilling at home and that. Or would no, you yeah, be like, I, I think I'd, wait, I'd probably. Just, I'd rather stick a fucking film on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, because <laughs> who gives a fuck? I mean, there's no like even the second string players are only bursting their hoop to fucking put their best foot forward because what's the yeah. point? They're all want to get home with their fucking families. Is that when you see like the Champions yeah. League final and that? You see like the runners up. You can't be fucked with the fucking medal like that. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, the, you see never the face like that. Ah, as soon as the boy puts all oh, the puts a runners up medal over the loser team, yeah. straight off straight again. Straight off, exactly. They're not getting a fuck about it. So no, nah, that's a big, big, big no from me, like. Nah, 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 <laughs> nah, nah. That's that's noise all around. I'm afraid. Well, we're yeah. fucking. 
we've spoke a lot of sports, man, but we'll just drop in a wee bit more because it was a big story from today. So let's drop into it. What's the goalie doing? 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 Well, today I think uh, football news is almost going to be like Ronaldo news today, isn't it? Man. What, what, what's the thoughts here? Murray, what's your thoughts on Ronaldo? I was going to say Torreira for fucking Arsenal, like, hey, but... <laughs> oh, for that, Murray's a big Arsenal fan. Fucking you better say. <laughs> what do you um, think? How old is he, what, 32? 33. 33. 100 was 108 million pound or euros? Euros. Euros. So something like 96 million or something. <sighs> I heard about it, what's out to? It's ridiculous. You see what he's getting paid, right? Yeah, was it about ninety k a day or something? Like that? Ninety thousand euros a day, or six hundred and fifty thousand euros a week. I, like, I tweeted that earlier. I'm like, fuck it, man. If somebody's going to pay you the cash, yeah, you fucking take okay, it. I mean, yeah. And I was speaking to somebody today as well. So what is he, man? What is he? Thirty two, thirty three, thirty three. So well, how long? Did we, he's how got did a four year deal. Four year deal. Yeah. I was shocked. I didn't think it'd be more than two years. But then, if you look at him, he's not exactly losing step, is he? He's probably fitter now than he was when he was plus as well wouldn't it, like the Italian league takes slower than the mm. Spanish league in other league so might suit him better mm-hmm. we'll see man but like to the first I didn't have a problem with Ronaldo I really didn't like I think he gets a bad rep because he's a competitive player on the pitch and the thing is but he keeps his that's the only thing you really hear about him is on the pitch Mm-hmm. He isn't he fucking out every weekend on the smash with the He's got like four kids and that though as well. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. yeah. He's no he's no a total arsehole. You never really hear about Ronaldo off the pitch being yeah. a diva. He's a diva on the pitch, but he's that's a competitor a as well. It, like away from the pitch, like fucking um, charity, charities and stuff right. like that. I totally. I watched that. Fi- I watched that film they done on him, that documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Documentary, and he just looks like a guy who just wants the best for his kid. He's brought his family up. Doesn't he drink? Doesn't he take drugs? Because he lost his dad was a Jake Ball. Mm-hmm. Looks yeah. after his mum. Brought his brother on as his manager, so his brother's yep. getting a fucking wage. Yes, he does a lot for charity, man. So I think he was back in his hometown as well, like in that. Maybe. Ah, exactly. Yeah. And he just seen like kids playing at the street, and he just he just pulled up alongside them and just was like talking with them. Like, ah, oh, good like, fucking. Boy's, boy's not nothing wrong with that okay, so. Do you know the motto he lives his life by? This is You can get this from ESPN. So it is, uh, my father always taught me when you help other people, then God will give you double. And that's what's happened to me. So when I help other people in need, God helps me even more. And that's basically what he believes helps him go on and win trophies and all that. He's also been named as the most charitable sportsman in the world. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's he, a list he, of things here that he's done. He gets a like, bad rep because people legitimate. only see him on the pitch. Yeah. So people look at him as a greeting face because he's always been playing, but it's because he wants to win. Yeah. He does not like to lose, yeah. and he wants to score goals. He yeah. wants to. He doesn't go on the pitch and not try his hardest. Like he's one player that you see ninety percent of the games you see him playing, he will run everywhere. Yeah. He'll come back and defend. He'll track forwards. I mean, he's he's a total player. I um, get. I I I believe. Uh, like I'm not Ronaldo, I don't do sport at you know, like what he does, but I understand that he probably goes out in the pitch and he's like, Yeah, I want at the end of this Champion League final for all the headlines to be about me. What a player Ronaldo yeah, is. Definitely. Yeah. You know? Amazing, you didn't get to that level of success in any walk of life without having that fucking attitude. Yeah. How long was he at uh, Madrid for then? Nine years. Nine years, yeah. And what was that like three golden boots, three Champions League? Fucking no, he won two La Ligas. I, I saw the thing earlier. Um, so it was two La Ligas, which is a pretty two league titles is a pretty poor return for right. nine seasons. Yeah, in but then again, that's, right. that's across the fucking the squad and that as well. And like the team around them wasn't it? It's not been the greatest Real Madrid team domestic wise. But mm-hmm. then I don't know if they've wanted more to keep on that because they were chasing the the tenth Champions League trophy, weren't they? Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, I mean, what has he won? He's won uh, four Champions Leagues, including three six, um, successively, two league titles, two Copa del Reyes, which is their main knockout yeah. uh, cup tournament, the Super Cup a couple of times. Uh, he's won the UEFA Super Cup three times, the FIFA World Cup, uh, World Club Cup on three occasions, and also whilst being a Real Madrid player, won the UEFA. European Championship with Portugal as well. I know that doesn't have anything to do with Real Madrid, but still, that's during the his last, time there, the he also won an international major so title. Like, you know what, fair fucks to him because he could have went. I'd imagine there would have been a, 
a number of places putting up the money for him. Mm. And he could have went back to Man United and been hailed as a hero, could have went to fucking PSG and mm. taken as much money. So he's always going to get paid a rate coming over the next four years anyway, but he seems like somebody who wants to try something different. Do you know what I mean? He's not just want to do the same, he's not just want to go to the old stomping ground. But then that's what, when we came back to it, like the Messi, Ronaldo kind of thing, I always say it's like Messi's a, a Barcelona type of player, whereas Ronaldo can fucking play anywhere. Yeah. You right. could put him yeah. in the team at MK Dons, but you could also put him in at Juventus. You well, could put him like in at Bayern Munich and he would score he goals and deliver everywhere. He dragged Portugal through the Euros. You say Messi wouldn't, but... Do you know what I mean? He dragged Portugal through the Euros, and he actually arguably dragged Portugal as far as he went in this tournament. With yeah. not a great amount of quality around them, whereas Messi didn't have a great amount of quality around them and was fucking... Horse for the, the World Cup. He's captain for the Argentina as well, eh? And didn't even fucking tell folk to get forward. No. Get didn't, back. He, didn't he look? I noticed down. that when they won, when they went to the World Cup final four years ago, and going into extra time, although Messi was the captain, he was just walking about on his own. It was Javier Mascherano mm-hmm. that had all the boys together and was fucking digging up the troops like Messi, he was Messi the captain. Messi like when he plays, because he might be spat the dummy out playing for Argentina a few years back. Yeah, he retired as well. Fuck it. Uh, retired. Somebody had put a good uh, thing on Twitter as well, you know, about Messi after the World Cup and that as well, and just sort of saying that being the most talented player potentially of all time doesn't necessarily make you the greatest player of all time. Mm-hmm. True. Which has always been my argument. I always thought that Ronaldo was a better player. Although mm. Zidane's a goat to me, he's my favourite. You can't argue with the fucking numbers that CR7 puts up. You, back in the day, a striker who scored one goal every two games was considered a good return. What's Ronaldo? Like 643 goals and... Or 543. It's different, man. They expect much more like from your midfielders games. nowadays, man. Much, much more from your midfielders nowadays than you used to. But more power to you, Ronaldo, son. So uh, we're lining up for the... Next semi final tomorrow, England Shire versus the Croatians. It's coming home, is it? I'm yeah, sick of those like fucking videos, mate. Wait. Can't wait for it to come home. I'm sick of those fucking videos, mate. My no. Twitter feed has been minging with them. Yeah. It's gone. It's like, fuck off. I mentioned this to you earlier though. See if the three lines, the song, is coming home. The lyrics were about like some bird. Or like going to the pub with your mates. It'd be the greatest pop. It'd be the greatest pop song ever. Mm. It Tell is what, honestly just, a wonderful, wonderful that. song. And yet the lyrics are. I'll never watched, ever be able to relate to it and enjoy it. Small portion Fucker. of a video of the lightning. <laughs> the lightning <laughs> scenes performing live somewhere in Leeds after the England game, mm-hmm. and it looked like the place was bouncing. And I was like, "Fuck's sake, Scotland!" Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's what it is. Didn't even know. I'm so jealous. Mm. So fucking jealous that they're getting to enjoy this like I can't remember the last time I was able to get behind the last time I was this behind my country or this excited was when Scotland beat France in the stand you know what I mean I remember my girlfriend my girlfriend's at the time who me her dad and her brother absolutely smashed jumping about going bananas when James McFadden scored for a million yards out that's the last time I can remember about being excited you know what I mean it's coming home Oh, Thank you. If they get to the final, though, that song will be number one. No, oh, it's it's number one. Yeah, it was at one. Apologize. That wee funny George Ezra came out and said, "Please stop buying my single, and go and buy Three Lions instead." Well, you're a fucking mug, George. Exactly. You might as well make your money now because nobody's going to remember you in fucking couple of years' time. I've never even heard of him before. Who the fuck is uh, he? <laughs> his first album was no bad. No bad. He's got a daft name. Don't like him. <laughs> um, Cut that out. <laughs> I'll just follow my traditional <laughs> usual as well. No. It's coming home, mate. We, sh- we should be in a good mood. We're feeling all depressed now because we know it's coming home. Ah, uh, well, here, this will cheer you up. Celtic won 3-0, right? Brilliant. I guess. Who uh, scored? It uh, was Edward, mm-hmm. French Eddie, Jimmy Forrest and Callum McGregor. Sand. One of the boys. The first of four qualifying games. Fuck yeah, man. Four qualifying rounds to get in the fucking group stages, man. That's ridiculous. That's fucking mental, man. Eight years ago, Scottish champions went straight in. Now Russia gets two teams straight in fucking champions. You know what I mean? It's coefficient, though, and there's the problem. And again, something we're tweeting about, we go back to Ronaldo and the, the obscene amounts of money that are in football. It's killing football around the world. If you're no one of the top two or three teams in the top four or five leagues, yeah. then 
European glory days and the stories of Brian Clough, Nottingham Forest and all that kind of shit happening. It'll never happen again. Leicester City. Yeah, that was one of the last yeah. ones, wasn't it? That might be the, oh. the last big one, but fuck, you never know, eh? Yeah. Tell us what you think as well. Get in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter and let us know what you think about the state of the sporting world or anything else you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Our ears are open and as you can tell, we'll fucking talk about whatever. Yeah, we'll give you your, you know, our opinions whether you like it or not. So yeah, take yeah. my opinion. Yeah, uh, everyone's entitled to my opinion. <laughs> Words to live your life by. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. I just talking about listening. We'll just seamlessly segue into what are we watching and listening to this week, and a brand new theme tune. What have you been watching or listening to this week? Rachel Guardian Angel of the podcast. She fucking loved it. Hi Rachel. Hi Rachel. What's your hi Rachel, man? Hi Rachel. There you go. <laughs> Become a fast growing tradition. Apparently she texted me the other day after she was listening to the Blind episode. She's like, just casually listening while I meet my dinner saying hi back to you guys. That's what you want. Uh, I asked her if she wanted to come on. She wasn't keen for it. We'll get her on one day. Uh, we, will, we will get you on one day, Rachel. Monkey Sword fights Guardian Angel. So what hi, have Rachel. you been uh, watching or listening to this week, laddies? Oh, I fucking... I finished that Evil Genius, mm-hmm. the four-part documentary about the collarbone heist in America. Ah, uh, I was going to fucking watch that. Mate. It's good. Fucking, literally, it's only four bits. You kind of, some documentaries you just burn out halfway through if there's like a 12 part grueling hour of an So it's only four hours. So we watched the first hour last week and then we watched the last three hours on Sunday. And mate, like, the, the, the collarbone bit's over and done with in the first episode. And it's all the shit that spills out the back of it. And all this other cases and all this shit that unravels as you're going through it. But at the end of it, you're literally, your jaw hit a flare. It's fucking fantastic, man. I'm telling Sounds you. Sounds good. Like, really, get okay, definitely go on that. Um, other than that, re listen to a lot of Arctic Monkeys this week after talking about them live. <laughs> I got the book. I did now, like, came out your favourite band, you didn't listen to it all the time, but every now and again you'll just go into this bit where you'll just dive into their entire back catalogue for like yeah. three or four days non stop, and you'll be like, ah, right, cool, I'm fucking charged up now. So, <laughs> I last week, like, literally, all I've been listening to is fucking uh, Arctic Monkeys back catalogue. So. And I've had a fucking grand old time. You love the Arctic Monkeys, so your favourite band of all time, oh, right? All time, mate. All You'd time. be fucking gutted if something happened to any of them, eh? Oh, what are you going to tell me, like? No, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> like, Ken. That was like... really fucking. You'd be really <laughs> upset if something happened to old Alex Turner, wouldn't you? Yeah, but no, not even that, like, Ken, like the fucking bass player or something like that. Again, okay, it's never the same again once one of them's gone, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I would actually, I. Uh, but, uh, fuck, I, I, I'm sure he was anything else. No, that's me. That's what I've been doing this week. What have you, Murray, got done? Anything interesting? Yeah, uh, I watched the second season of Luke Cage. Any good? Hmm. I never Not as good as the first one, it's alright. I never even made it all the way through the first thing. See, I thought the first thing was good. The only one, the only one of these Marvel TV series I've enjoyed start to finish has been the, both seasons of Daredevil. I did, it was alright. But the other ones, oh, Jessica Jones was alright. Murray's literally seen everything. Like, Murray's well up to date on like, all the best on shows. The He's the man for what you've been watching or listening to this week. What else you got, man? Uh, I'll never be watching anything else. <laughs> <laughs> fucking magic. I build them up, I build them up, and then. Oh, no, no, because I've been fucking. It was you on Friday, I had a web reception on Saturday, and then smashed a few episodes out of the cage on Sunday, and finished last night. Yeah. So that's what I've been watching now. Yeah, listening to anything, re listening. I've been listening to loads of stuff. Well, oh, fucking talk um, about it, you prick. It's my usual, kill switch. Um, You've been listening to, uh, what's his name's new band? Oh, uh, Light the Torch. That's, Light the Torch. That's a, a new band I've been listening to. Who's this? Uh, Light the Torch. Um, Howard Jones used to sing in Kill Switch Engage. He's got his new band. Very good. Good. That's the one I gave a small review a few weeks ago because Murray had come down to mine and he's like, any chance you could put uh, a couple songs off for me? I was like, I don't care what you're wanting to listen to. And then me and him sat and listened to it. I was like, that's actually fucking pretty good. Can you get a song 7.5 out of 10? I can't even remember. You'd get the monkey sword fight rating, it's seven bananas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bananas <laughs> but I fucking just been listening to that. Um, just listen to all stuff like going back, listen to Michael Jackson, Linkin Park, POD. 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 Throwback, man. I've got a couple right. of POD songs saved. I've got uh, Boom and um, Alive saved on my uh, my playlist, man. Here comes a Boom's a belt, especially yeah, if you're in the gym, you feel like a fucking beast. Is that, is that, is that uh, 
I feel so alive for like next morning when you're hungover. <laughs> I feel, I feel nothing close to alive on Saturday. You're in a lot better nick than me, and apparently, as far as I could work out, you'd you, you felt a lot worse than what I did. But it's just like by the time I got to Mike's, it's like I got no energy, man. Sure, you know it is, man. I've, I've had a burn for nine years, so you learn how to function, yeah. even if you're crippled inside. Which I was like. You're trying to take photographs of me. I'm like, fuck this, <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, like, fuck's sake. Oh, mate, that was a bella. What about you, Andy, Mark? What have you had on the cards? Uh, well, I've not been watching much. That uh, not been um, listening to much this week. It's really just been uh, football and, uh, like you say, since we were on the other day, it's, it's been fucking. I don't know. Quiet on the western front. Aye, pretty quiet. Um, I've been really just podcasts for me. Obviously, I've been listening to uh, Ricky Gervais's show on Sirius SXM, and also a shout out to another podcast I listen to. A couple of Irish geezers called the Pod Squad, Maybe, yeah, probably, uh, which yeah. I was sent to you to to have a listen to. Um, those guys are, are really good as well. So I think just since I started getting into the podcast and stuff, I've just been d- discovering a few more bits and pieces. Oh, yeah. um, apart from that, I saw a this thing about Love Island and I finally understand who this Megan person is oh, yeah, this is this been, she's a fucking slut man she can't make up her fucking mind it's like she's like I want to shag this guy and then you're like alright oh, no bother and then some other guy comes in and she's like I can't be fucking arse with you anymore and then she's on to like the next guy and that she's the one thing like that name has been trending right. on my Twitter I'm like what the fuck's going on here? yeah I saw this thing it was just like oh, here's everything you need to know about like the first five weeks or something and I sat and watched it I was like he is. No wonder everybody. You watch every day. You're lying. <laughs> you're from, like, you say, fuck I've got an STV. I'm just sitting on STV and like watching the World Cup. I watch my Love Island day. Well, fucking on honour of Mike Dots, we've still included a wee bit of Love Island. Yeah. So there you go, Mikey. We do miss you, pal. Yeah. Mikey will be back with us in a couple of weeks. So, and well, we're going to keep it short because I said you just had your bonus episode. Bang on an hour for tonight, pretty much. Yeah. So it'll be about 50, 55 minutes. Okay. Right, well. Like I say, everyone, thank you again for all the kind words about myself and Andy's performance last week at the mar- marvellous blending standout. We're definitely going to be back. Um, thank you for listening, subscribing. Mm. Find us on Twitter at MSF underscore podcast. Find us on Facebook, Monkey Sword Fight Podcast. We've got Instagram, search Monkey Sword Fight. I can't remember what it's called. Mike does that in. Email is monkeysordfightpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. YouTube will be up as well. Let's like say stay tuned for more. Let us know anything you want us to talk about. Keep it keep in the feedback coming. Let's like say get back at us. Yeah, it doesn't need you need to keep it clean either. Ah, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about anything. Doesn't matter. Uh, where can I find you on Twitter, Jordan? You can find me on Twitter at Wagwan Patrice. That's W A G J U A N P A T R I C E. Wagwan Patrice. Murray Ged, you're on Twitter, aren't you? Yeah, I've got it somewhere, haven't I? Do you know what it is? It's probably like Murray Ged or some shit, eh? I don't use Twitter, though. There it is, there. You won't know people, you'll get It's some... Murray underscore Ged. Well, that's me, that's the thing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Hi. his Twitter <laughs> profile picture is a picture of him when he met Arsene Wenger. And it's one of the best things about when I go up to Murray's house is he's got a framed Arsenal shirt on the wall. And underneath are two pictures of him and his best pal, Arsene Wenger. Is that your bro, is it? My bro, mate. That's my bro. Murray was one of the few people that didn't slag off Arsene Wenger that much when we used to speak about football. Kind of sometimes did. Kind of sometimes Before anybody like, listens into the podcast and goes, nah, I remember when he was like, Arsene Wenger out. Well, sometimes, but... I would have been tamer. I would have been... So now fucking... I yeah. been one do you know what, just before, we, just before we finish off, because he's such a big Arsenal man, uh, how do you think Arsenal are going to get on next season? What do you see? A couple of good signs so far. It's quite a shot to the side. We see like four signs before fucking August. I'm interested to see um, how long they give up. I think they'll put. I think they'll give him long. But I'm just wondering as well. Like these signings, are these signings because he's coming? He's demanded these signings, or is it because of that boy we got from Dortmund last season? And he's now fucking more involved in. Right, we're saying yeah. him, and that's it. Because I've also got the Spanish fucking what's his name? The used to be the not the president, but he was like head scout for Barcelona. Ah, they've got him in as well. So fuck knows. You think you'll win the league this year? Oh fuck! You think you'll win the <laughs> top four, mate? Top four. Top four, right? Top four. Do you Get think back you'll at the top four? Right. Do you think you'll go have a good run in the Europa League? Um, I think we will. Alright. It's been his memory. He got us three. Does it? Twice or three times he's won it. I think he won it three times with Sevilla, didn't he? Yeah. Mm. 
and uh, obviously you're FA Cup specialist, so can you see a wee domestic trophy this season? Tell you what, sorry. Just nah, you... Carlin Cup, or whatever the fuck it's called. Tell you what, was the worst Man game Cup. of football I've ever seen in my life was fucking that last FA Cup final. Oh, yeah. That was... Who was that again? It was Man U Chelsea. Yeah. Oh, that was oh, fucking yeah. dying, right? So I remember I've been out with my old man for the Scottish Cup final earlier on in the day, having a great time, it was a grand time, good game. And then went back to his and watched the FA Cup final and fuck me did I want to go for a kit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it was pretty fuck. bad. Fuck the FA Cup. I'll also be glad I won't be back on the show next week either. <laughs> Somebody a bit more fucking lively. <laughs> no, it's alright. Thanks for uh, coming on. I'll just give my Twitter out quickly, at my capella. I think oh. that's pretty much us. For right. today. No, cheers for coming on again. Thank you again. So, uh, keep listening, liking, yeah. reviewing and subscribing. Cheers, Murray. Guys. That's okay. Peace. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs>